say and spell your name, please. My name is Llewellyn Kaohe Laulii. L-L-E-W-E-L-Y-N. K-A-O-H-E-L-A-U-L-I-I. Kaohe Laulii. Thank you. And what is your connection to this land right here? This land well, I lived on this land almost all my whole life. Well, my whole life, anyway. We lived right almost right next to the Heiau, Kaneolo Oma. But all my life I lived here and we, uh, my family is from Poipu. And Actually, my grandfather and my mom, them was all living in Poipu. And then my grandfather, he was a fisherman. He was a sergeant of police. I mean, he had, he used to take care of all the fish ponds and the waters, the waterways. <clears throat> but he was a, uh, and um, we would uh, fish a lot. And then that's how we would survive, um, fishing and um, farming taro. And um, it's all down here was all taro patches and salt beds and um, fish ponds. That's how we went for our food. We, when we grew up, when I was young, my dad, he worked for this company, quite commercial on the west side, and then um, he would come home. We would go fishing and we would catch some fish for the dinner, for dinner. But um, that was almost everyday life, you know. Can you tell me more about the farms that were here and what were the years of the taro farms and sweet potato and things that you're talking about that were here? What years? I think was way back. All that farming was back here, way back, you know, in the 1800s, because when they threw everybody out, I mean, all the Hawaiians left. The Kanakas, they left. And um, a lot of them, because they took the land away. And now, when you become, when they take the land away from you and you become, uh, they put us into a colony. We cannot fight back for our lands. And that, that was, I go, what? You know, now we're figuring them out. Well, well, you know, they took all our land. Now we don't have land. Now the, like the, now the youngest come up now, no land. So this is the Kanaka Maoli land. I don't know what even we use this land maybe for the Kanaka people because in the old days, this was all Kanaka people live here. It wasn't anybody else. And this this was a uh, Wele Wele Ahupua. And um, right there has the uh, the wall, the division of the Ahupuas, go from the mountain to the ocean. That was what we would do, just do a little farming in our own yard, you know, vegetables and stuff like that. And then coconuts, we eat a lot of coconuts. That's what my dad taught me when I was young. You hungry, right there, a coconut tree. Don't worry about anything. You just worry, you stay alive, you know. That's how I did it, way back. You Tell know. me more about the farms that used to be here and how they could well, make a farm on lava. Well, kind of like w way back, you know, I know that, that the taro patches and sweet potatoes right back there. And then th that was, went to the gold rush. It went to? To the gold rush in right. California. Oh, the gold rush. The gold rush. All that, this is way back now. It wasn't my, even my time. You know what I mean? But like I said, this whole place was fish pond. Uh, that's what, like our farm, you know, we take it a fish, we're going to eat the fish. <laughs> and the potato, the sweet potato and uh, taro, that was our main dish, you know. But like I said, man, we, we had, 
in that piece of land there, had so much fruit trees, a lot of fruit trees, mangoes, oranges, um, Hawaiian oranges, um, apple, I mean, uh, lily koi's, uh, guavas, uh, all kind of fruit. And so the ships would come into Koloa Landing. Right. And the food. So yeah. how did the food get from the farms to the ships? Probably when they, they brought in the, the plantation people. Because when they brought in everybody, they had railroad tracks all over this place, you know? And then that's how they would get them down to the, the sheep. We would put them on a track. Because I, I guess they had on track over here. And how about water? Can you talk about the Hawaii system? It's it's yeah. dry, it's lava yeah. here. Yeah. So please talk to me okay. about how the water came back in a long time ago. How did the Hawaiians able to... The find... Hawaiians, in the old days, they somehow made their own Hawaii. Uh, divide all the water, but mostly the water went to the taro patches and the fish ponds. Because we'd go to the taro patch, feed the taro patch, then go in a fish pond. Then from the fish pond, supposed to go in the ocean, because that's where all our spawning go. But like I said, the farming, and then um, was all the way, all this whole area was farming, because they had the water coming this way. You know, they had on Hawaii. I remember that Hawaii. Oh, I've yeah. them all, all inside here, and it goes along, along these walls down here. And it goes under the wall. Then it goes to feed the taro patches. And someone who doesn't know what Hawaii means, what does Hawaii mean? Hawaii means the water that runs on the ground. <laughs> and then you see, we make a Hawaii like that, like a Hawaii, and it's the, the water run right down the, down the Hawaii. So some time ago, how far back was the system created? Way back, gotta be in the eighteen hundreds before. You know, because this go way back to the twelve hundreds, and you know, like the chief, like I said, when uh, my grandfather days, the chief. That's how we got our own land to Eke Opanui, the chief, and he would say, "You stay here, and if any commerce come in, you let them stay. If they don't work, they gotta go." That's the Ahupua way, you know, the people first, then come the, the moku, you know. Can you say more about that? The moku is the, the, the person that takes care of the Ahupua from the mountain to the ocean. And he takes care of his people and whoever is around. And then, like I said, you, you got to, when you come to the farming, either you work, you like stay there, you gotta work. And then if you don't work, you gotta go, go another place. <laughs> but it's Aohupua, you know, from the mountain to the ocean. And always by the ocean on the coastline, always get the, the springs. Like this place here, tons of water springs. I mean, spring, you would see that fresh water just coming out of the ground in the old days. Like had one spring over here, one water spring. Was so much spring, it's so much water, cold water now, coming straight from on top of these mountains. All come off the mountain, come down to all these caves and all these waterways, and then they come to the Hawaii's, feed all our taro patches and goes into the fish ponds. But like I said, this whole area was Taro patch and fish ponds. This whole area. And the Aupua. Aupua. That's from the, the land, the, the pie division of the land, from the mountain to the ocean. And everybody understood. Yeah. Was everybody knows. Everybody, everybody knows. Everybody knows what? Everybody knows that if you go over there, you want to stay and you want to, you know, you know, because in the old days, you see, you, you don't want to have a house. You, you know, you know, you in a little cave. <laughs> you don't have a house, so whatever 
you got to be either a fisherman or a farmer. In those days, was how you going to eat. So like, like I said, the, the, the people that want to live here, they got to live by a farm where you can get food and you, where you can fish. I'm asking you a lot about this because after this, the plantation system came. Yeah. There was, you know, one person or someone at the top. Yeah. They controlled everything and people were paid to work the land and they were given housing. Right. So how is that different from this system? Well, from the, those old days, man, McBride, um, well, they, they, all the immigration now. You're talking about everybody, not only one people. You had Chinese, you had Japanese, you had all kinds of immigration. No, they took over this place. The Kanaka people just stand up. Oh, they're ruining our, our wives to feed the taro patches. The Kanakas are so bombed. When the people came in and ruined the whole chunk of lands and everything, and they allow the state allowed the people, the immigration to come in, like McBride, Plantation, they, they're all the big farmers now. I'm talking about the guys that took all the land. They took almost all the land. The farming that was the McBride and Plantation and all these people, they took, um, like now, we wanted to go check our hay house. You know, we had hay house, not only over here, there's tons of hay house all over here. But every time they, they try to protect, you know, take our land away, we want to go malama the land to clean. They're not. You got to ask permission, but that's our land, you know. It's been changed so bad, it's, it's beautiful. I don't know how. Our connectors gonna survive in a couple more years because they took all our land away, and and, the, and and they're not thinking of the youngers. It's so much younger now. But today, you know, can these kids no one can afford living over here? It's too high the price. State of Hawaii, I don't know what they're doing to us, but this is us. No, all what I seen ain't gonna come back. Ain't coming back. But that's why we're protecting these areas right now before it's the ruin of them. What do you want the Keiki to know? I want them to know that this place here is all Kanaka and supposed to be preserved forever. You know, forever, perpetuated. These guys ruining all our land. What would you do if you had this land to you? How would you nurture it? Man, I really don't know, but I think I'm going to have to get a lot of people involved. If they, the state let it, let it go with us, we take over. We get all the Kanaka people together and start going, man. You take it easy, you get some people, you take it easy, you get some people. Until you're done. If, if we can stay on our land, cannot believe it. You know, how much land we had and they just took them away. Pretty radical. I mean, you know, this is over hundreds of years. All the people was all our lands and the people that was here, they took them away. And now who you think is the land? <laughs> who you think is the land? So it bought me out, you know, I, I'm a Kanaka Maole. My dad is from Nihau, and he speak fluent. But I was amazed of his handwriting. That guy could write, man. Couldn't believe it. I don't know what school he went to, but he, I, he went to our school. And the Heiau, the Heiau here, the Heiau, like you said, all over this land. All over. What is the Malama to take care of the Heiau? To take care of the land. 
And what does that mean exactly? Like if you were going to teach me, yeah. uh, just to say hypothetical, what would I actually, what would you be teaching me to do? How to clean malama and care for the aina. That's the thing about it because our foot is on this aina. We must malama our aina. That's what give back. You see, people don't understand it. The land give back. If you put it in, you put your work in, you come back. That's why look all these trees here. We planted them up five, six years ago. The thing are fruiting. It's all fruiting. That's what it is. Malama care for the land. And plus, uh, hey, uh, there's people in there, yeah. There's graves in there. That's why we never like nobody to go in there and mess around. But because of the state and county, our land and the people raid our, our, our moss rock for all these millionaires down the road. There goes all our rock. That's our culture. They destroy <coughs> our culture. The state no care, the county no care because they sell them. They sell the land. They rain the moss rocks to build what you call plantation homes, they say. Plantation homes. Because they get rocks in the, over there in the beginning of the house. Yeah, but you're ruining our culture. They did that from way back. Nobody could stop them. Why is that? This you saw with your own eyes. Oh. Can you tell me one memory that you have seeing this happen in front of you? The rocks, the taff rocks, every night they steal the rocks over here. They get big groups of gangs. They come in here, tongues. They're making millions of dollars off the cultural rocks. Millions of dollars. That's why you go A and B. The houses is in millions and ten million dollars because of these moss rocks. That's why I'm so, like me, I live right in the heart of that. Every night I see that. I don't sleep. I cannot sleep. Every time I hear a rock move, I, I get up. I cannot. I got to come out of there and chase them. That's what I do. My job now. I got a malama the land, like I said. That's my kapunas there. My grandfather dies. This is their land. And your future generations of your family, how are you passing on? Uh, well, sure I get I get my kids, and uh, you know, I try to teach them everything I know. I teach them fishing. I teach them. They're all right. They're pretty good. You know, I gave them my Hawaiian homelands. I said I cannot live out there. I leave my love of my my father's land. Put my sister guys do take them and sell them and if I sell my land here now, I am not. This is my roots. I cannot leave this place, it's my roots. I keep on telling my family, I'm not going to sell. My father said, no, nope, you stay here till you die. That's my last father words, we stay here till you die. And well, well, you know, that goes to me and my sisters, that house there, and my brother. So we get five. So all them want their money, and one of them passed away already, but still, some of them wasn't on the title, you know. And all of a sudden, everybody died, they, they're on the title. But it's because my sisters, you know, they did it, you know, as soon as my parents died, they did everything and I, you know, I'm there. Then it came for me because I had, I'm a fisherman like my grandfather. I had nets all over this yard. I had things all over, I had boats. I had, you know, that's what I was, I'm a fisherman. And I was a fisherman for a long time, till about 10 years ago, I hurt my leg. No, I don't, I don't want to even do that heavy work, too much work. Me, excuse me, a little bit about Mahalaku, the place where Kaloa sugar yeah, 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 is, yeah. that land there. Okay, now. 
happened on that, that before, land before the sugar mill. Okay. That land there is all Kanaka land. That there, my grandfather owned a lot of land out there. And then they had a lot of taro patches. And as we was going good, until this, this McBride would take the water. They divert the water, they divert it all the water, and so they even shot all the taro patches down there. They get small little taro patches, but they're not using, they're not using, they get water pipe. Mm -hmm. Did this affect your grandfather's ability to farm the land? No, no, no. My grandfather, um, uh, they just took him away from him. Like I said, you know these big time land grabbers? They took, took 100 acres from there and right in Mahalapu, that was a prime land. And he had the spring water, he had everything on that land. But, but Mahalapu is, was the, it's the last of last beach that no more, nothing on them. Just get one house, but still, it's the last of last on Kauai. Mahalapu, they never touch yet, but still. Now, the Mac Ride thing they own over there, so they was using them for movies and all kinds of stuff. They still occupying that mill, which they supposed to have moved that and get out of there a long time ago because the, the, the cane and pineapple is gone a long time ago. But they never take them away. They never, you know what I mean? They just laugh it there until they use it and use it. Now they bring in companies in to use that place. Like the all kinds of small little business. They want to use the hiking. And, you know, the, Malapu is on pretty popular place. And plus a lot of people never even see that place. Like my friends, I just brought them there. I said, wow. I said, see, when it's stormy rain, it's the kind of place you got to go where nobody stay. So there's a younger generation of uh, people who are thinking about the land. They're thinking about how do we provide food for the people of Hawaii, yeah. right? Not just, you know, sugar to sell, corn no, to sell. Okay. So how about these? What up would there, you say? Like, up a... there had a lot of farming. Up there had a lot of farming. But you know what they did? It's not right. They had all this uh, honey bucket pumping. They dump them over there. Then they get the jail guys who farm them. Then everybody gets sick, eating them, shut down. Then all this goes in a ditch, stream, pollute the whole place, what Malapu. Years is this? Until now. He's been gone forever. And it, we was like, we was fighting for the water. See, they shut the water down, go to Mahalapu. You know, because there was all the farm. There was all the farm. And then, you, you know why? Like I said, they was using, dumping all the Hanabaki. After so many months, the thing will dry up, they go plant. Then the people who eat them, they get sick. And I fire. They pissed. They really pissed because there was, we shut that one Mahalapu down because they were, they was going to put a dairy there. Put a what? A dairy. A dairy. Yeah, this rich guy came in and he wanted to put a dairy out there. Sugar yeah. In that same building? Yeah, no, in a, uh, it's further around there someplace though, anyway. But they wanted to put a nice dairy down there and we told them no. We don't want that. We live here. We can get all the flies, we can get everything, we can get the smell, everything. We never like it. So what we do, we can go down the beach there and we get everybody's boat. We, we like dairy and like dairy. I mean, we got the main people we think. Like dairy and not like dairy. And then you should see how much they came try to push their dairy. Forever. And we kept on hanging in there, hanging in there. And we want them. I couldn't believe it, this millionaire. We want them on the dairy thing. 
I couldn't be because we was with, uh, I was, uh, like I said, I was the moku for the area. I don't know if you know that. Can you explain what that means? The moku is the, like I said, I, I explained it earlier, it's the, the moku is the, the, the area, Ahopua, and it takes care of these people on that Ahopua. That's what it means, Moku. And the people, they don't want, they don't want to fight for, you know, and I got to go fight in the, in the big thing. <laughs> How is it that you obtained this position? Moku, is it? Passed down in your family, or no? It's because I, I was a moku for for eight ten years, and then they shut it down when they had the pandemic, and then now they're coming back with that. It's just for help the the Kanaka people, you know. I mean, they get the rights of the land. What would you like to see happening on that land? In the land? Would you like to see small farms there? Or what would you like to see? I, I don't know. Right now, it's so so hard to, because, you know, then again, they, they're going to need water. They're going to need all kinds of stuff back there. It's pretty, pretty much back there. I, I really, you know, I don't think we're going to get water down there to feed all the farming. I would love that, because it's all Hawaiian lands. I mean, connect on land. And do you think that there are people here on the island, maybe younger people, who would like oh, to, yeah. learn, to, who no. would love to learn? We to get farm. them. We get them, the farmers. We farmers. They get them already. Where? Get the, all young kids. Well, we, because I know a lot of people like to farm, especially now. Now you look hard for buy food. That's why everybody like farm. That's why I told my fishermen, they tell me, well, oh, you can fish all you like, but you need the out of vegetables. <laughs> you need the vegetables. So part of your vision would be for younger generations yeah. to be able to farm. The, the people, I like the young generation to step up, do what I, I do, you know, just care for the land and the people. You know, get more love the land, especially Kanaka land. That's why I never, I told a guy, you know, that I told a county guy and they, they was grumbling about me going in. Oh, the whole thing about the county, they think they own everything. And he, he stepped back. I told him, wow, you don't own nothing. We own all. So, the county guy, he was uh, some kind of executive county for Fox and Recreation. And I told him, look, he's my grandfather's land. I don't care what you say. I want Malama this land, whether you like it or not. So now he's the main guy for the county. He ended up calling me for coming there. If he like going there, he ended up calling me. I told him, you see, this is the way it's supposed to be. Not you guys think you guys own the land. And when you say Malama the land, I'm sorry for asking yeah, such yeah. a simple question, but if there was three things you could say, like what would be like clean up the trash? Yeah. No, what clean. Would be like three things. We yeah. Show the young people. Yeah. This is how you Malama the land. Yeah. What would you say? Three well, things they clean can the rock, clean all. Because a lot of stuff in there is not belonging there. It's just weeds going. There. So you got to clean them all up. And then, um, you gotta make sure you can get all these trees growing right, you know. And then the trees, I mean, it's a lot of work in there. But it's good for the schools, you know. Because we had a lot of schools coming in. Camp school, UH football team. We had the UH football team. <laughs> we made them camp, but they was, you know, train, training. So part of it is to clean it up, right? Yeah. And then number two, maybe, is make it so the trees can flourish, the yeah. trees can grow. What else? No, and then we're going to fix up all the walls in there because they're, they've been raiding the walls and, for, you know, so now we got to protect everything. we got to pull them back. But 
we have some rocks and we're gonna fix them up because we got all of his group get all our guys that do the walls and so i have probably a million more things i'd love to ask you and i am thankful so much for the time already yeah, yeah, my yeah. last question for you today if yeah. you would is what do you want people to know about the canal what do you want them to know about these i want them to know that this is poipu it's not you know, all these, all these crazy people are not supposed to be like this, you know what I mean? Not supposed to be poipu, but I don't know. I hate to see this place go. That's the thing. This place should stay forever. But I don't know. I want them selling the place. No, because the county can not even pick up the rubbish. We've been working hard on this place. Every time we get a kickback from everybody. Like we took out the keys, you know, we, you know. And that was a thing for put them up and take them down. You gotta get them clean. But anyway, so far we're all good here, you know. We're trying our best to keep our lands, but all these, no matter what we do, we still firing away, man. They don't want to, you know, this is free land. Well, the the hey, this place yeah. has, <coughs> excuse me, it has great cultural significance to the Hawaiian people. Oh, yeah. Why is that important to the world? Well, see, they gotta know that this is Kanaka land. This place is Puipu. It's the famous place right here. This is here. That's the one saving Puipu. Or else they would have changed Puipu name already. Puipu is rolling boulders. That's what it means. Rolling boulders, Puipu. And how is this, you know, I, again, like... Poipu is the area already as, as Poipu. But because of the rocks all in the front, you know, when waves hit them, they rip up the road, rip up the rock, rip everything up. That's why they made this road. Because that road every time, the coastline would beat them up with the high tides. And we know this is the only genuine Hawaiian village still... Yeah in existence yeah. so can you just speak about the importance the significance of that again to hawaii but also to world culture like yeah. why should people care they gotta care because we got them out. like i said we care for the, the components is there that's the ones and we do what they was doing take care take care that's what they was doing. Okay, and this really is my last question. What would this world be like if everyone took care of that one? Oh, this place would be like heaven. I'm telling you, this is this is like God's country. And it's going to go. This is the only place left. And you know, like I said, we're right after that pandemic. Yeah, and bring millions of people. The road was so packed with people. And now they're trying to bring them all in. Get all these condos over here. I cannot handle too many people over here. Look, we can even take a long time for us to drive out of here. There's all this traffic and cars and oh man. But like I said, this here, yo, my grandfather's. That was their land. And when we used to live here, this land, you wouldn't believe it how far the land would go. That's what was our land. But my house, always a guarantee. But you wouldn't believe Sarantin in old days was beautiful fish ponds. Beautiful. My grandfather used to take care of it. And my dad used to go 
We used to go early in the morning, take open the thing, let the let fish go back out. But always, it's the waterways. Was there more fish back then? Loaded fish. In in my father's days, had so much fish. Like as soon as I stopped fishing, already fish deplete because over here they was catching all kind of fish, small fish, big fish, you know. <clears throat> but like I said, Kane Oloma took the heart of me and my grand my grandfather and like when I was young, <clears throat> me and my uncle she's a hunter, you know. <clears throat> they had pigs, they had all kinds of stuff in there. They came out for the from that mountain there, they came out for the fruits. Lily koi, guava, mango, tangerines. I mean, there was, and all through here I had pigs. All through here, everybody used to come take guava, little koi, make little koi cake. But there was the young days. Now it's not. It's all gone. Everything is gone. Everything is down great. No more. That's why we gotta stick to our land, my boy. That's why, once you get your own land, you go your own, you farm your own. I'm saying now, not before, before big farms, but now. So I need a farm, you don't have a big land, you know. Me, I gotta grow mine in my pockets. So I grow my food. <laughs> Everybody grow, oh, how oh, big that tomato tree? Six feet? <laughs> <laughs> this is all red cherry tomato. Yeah, you see. So, that, that was, that's how I survived now. Avocados, mangoes. I got them all in my yard. Got them all in my yard. And you, your lineage, you're you're taking care of this land. Is there a blessing or something that you would like to offer? for this land and for the future generations to take care of it? Oh, yeah. That's why pretty soon when, you know, me and Rupi is older, we gotta find the youngest to take step up because, you know, they're gonna have to take care. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to add? I hope you get enough. <laughs> <laughs> Right on, sister. Thank you so much. Right on.